and study English with us at Eastland English. Take a road trip with Eastland English. We've just parked in downtown St. John's. It was very easy to find a parking spot here. Now we have to go and buy a ticket to pay for our parking. Let's see if it's the same price as in Quebec and in Ottawa. We have a lock the car. <laughs> right. I gotta lock the car first. It's important to always lock your car when you leave it, especially when you have all of your luggage inside like we have. We're here at the parking pay station. The first, press any button. Ah, I got right. it. Okay. Select payment methods. Yeah, it's only a dollar seventy-five for two hours. That's okay. not too bad. Okay. Interestingly, I got out money to pay for our parking. Normally, you can put in change to pay for parking, but in St. John's, no coins are even accepted. So we're going to have to pay using either our phone or a debit card. Where are we now? We are in the colorful area of St. John's, Newfoundland. We're going to show you the beautiful, beautiful, colorful buildings around here. Oh, I see what you're saying. I know what you're laughing about now. Remember in Quebec, we tried the pedestrian walking signal, but this is kind of broken. So, oh, do we have to wait forever? No. Oh, no, we can go. go. One of the characteristics that makes St. John so famous is the multicolored buildings throughout the city. We were going to visit the area that has the highest concentration of those colors. This building, although colorful, is an example of the Art Deco style, which is actually not very common in Canada. This apartment building was the only example of Art Deco that we saw. There we go. Jelly Bean Row. We're here in lovely downtown St. John's, Newfoundland. This area is known as Jelly Bean Row. Jelly beans are known for having different colors and different flavors, so this area got the nickname Jelly Bean Row because each house is painted a different color. The different colors are all quite brilliant and unique. They're different from each other. Therefore, they look like jelly beans. Jelly beans are brightly colored and they're usually assorted. Assorted means they come in various flavors. Here, all of the houses are brightly colored but colored differently from the one next to them. So we have a game that we'd like to play with you. What flavor is that color? Come with us on a walk down Jelly Bean Row. Find your favorite flavor. The name for the area, Jelly Bean Row, inspired us to create our little game. We would pick one building's color and say what flavor jelly bean that color would be. Let's try it together. If these colors were flavors, which color is which flavor to you? Please participate with us and share your opinions in the comment section of this video. I see orange for this color. I think it's peach. This one on the corner must be grape. Are you kidding me? That's definitely blueberry. Now let's try a bunch of them in a row. Orange. Lime. Lemon. Coffee. Mint. Banana. Now it's your turn. Tell us what you think. There's more up this way. Let's take a walk up here. One of the many interesting things that we've discovered here in Jelly Bean Row is that some of the mailboxes are actually microcosms of Jelly Bean Row itself. A microcosm is a small picture of the bigger picture. Look at this. Each one of these houses on the mailbox is painted a different color. Pretty cool, huh? We began shooting our vlog episode about Jelly Bean Row on the road recommended by Google Maps, which is a small street near the downtown area. 
The name Jelly Bean Row implies that there is only one row, or one street, with these kinds of houses. However, we found them nearly everywhere in the downtown area. Here, there are mostly residences or dwellings, places where people live. The vibrant facades of the buildings are iconic to Jelly Bean Row as well as downtown St. John's. As we explored a little further, we found that even the shops and restaurants were also painted in this iconic style. Every building was a different, bright, or interesting color. There's a plethora of these buildings. No two adjacent buildings were the same color. Many people think that the practice of painting houses with such different and vibrant colors is to make them more visible to fishermen in foggy weather. However, this painting scheme was started in the 1970s as a plan to revitalize the downtown area. We were lucky enough to arrive on a sunny day. The weather was not too cold. On the other hand, we were about to go to a place that would be extremely cold, Signal Hill National Historic Site. This morning we've come to Signal Hill, a national historic site in Canada. This is on a hill overlooking St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador. Atop Signal Hill sits Cabot Tower, a structure built in 1897. There is a visitor center and a gift shop inside, but like most of the sites we visited, it was closed in mid-May. It would have been nice to duck inside and take shelter from the weather, as the wind was quite extreme that day. A new look for you, Yudi. It's very windy. I need the hood to protect my ears. Come along with us. Look at this beautiful old building behind you here. The temperature was not too cold, but with the wind chill factor, it was the coldest experience Yudi had ever had. This for sure is the coldest Yudi has ever been. <laughs> The wind was so strong that day that it ripped our dead cats off of our microphones and almost all of the audio that we recorded was unusable. We did not notice that our microphone covers were gone until after we left. Luckily, we got some usable audio and many gorgeous shots from the top of Signal Hill. We could even see Cape Spear Lighthouse. Ah, our last destination yesterday, and even though it was quite cold yesterday, it's far colder today. The temperature is 5 degrees Celsius, but the wind here is gusting up to 40 or 50 kilometers, almost knocking us off the hill. It's cold. On this side, it shows that the wind can get up to 140 kilometers per hour. Cabot Tower is actually a fortress made of stone. In the past, it was inhabited by soldiers and signalmen who would watch for enemy ships and give a warning signal to others if they saw the enemy. In 1901, this hill became very famous for a different kind of signal. It was a major scientific breakthrough. On December 12th of that year, a transatlantic wireless, or radio, signal was sent from Cornwall, England, across the sea and was received by Guglielmo Marconi, who is known as the inventor of the radio. The signal sent and received was the letter S in Morse code, just three quick clicks, which were continuously repeated. Since leaving Canada, we found out that this cannon, called the Noonday Gun, can be fired by tourists. <laughs> this gun still works. They shoot this every day at noon during the tourist season. The fee is $77.53 per person to shoot it. It feels like the camera is going to be pulled out of my hands and 
thrown over the cliff due to the wind. Right, and I think it's not a good idea that you take a photo um, at the edge of this cliff because the wind can blow you down there. That is very dangerous. I had to hold on to Yudi because I was afraid she was going to get sucked off <laughs> the top of the mountain. Yudi is being a real hero shooting in this incredibly difficult weather. These conditions are extreme for sure. But there she is shooting the harbor below. The best part of getting to the top of Signal Hill was the outstanding views of St. John's Harbor and the downtown area. A harbor is a safe place for ships, protected from the open ocean. For bigger ships, getting into the harbor is quite difficult. All traffic must pass through a dangerous passage called the Narrows, which requires much skill and experience to navigate. What just happened to you? Well, I was trying to get into the car and I stopped right here and the wind blew the car door shut and hit me right on the side Ouch. of the head. <laughs> That's how crazy the wind is. Here's the raven. That's what I was trying to get, a good shot of the raven, and I got whacked in the head by the door. Here we are at Winners. Even when you're on a long road trip, sometimes you get the hankering to do a little shopping. Please forgive the sound quality. We lost both of our dead cats on that mountain. The wind blew our dead cats off the mountain and into the ocean, so no more dead cats. Let's go in and do some shopping. Yes, right, let's go. As most road trippers do, the first thing that we looked for when we got to a big store was the restrooms. So uh, the other woman could not find a dryer in the bathroom. So after we washed our hands, our hands are wet, so we could not find it elsewhere. It turns out it is the same machine. The machine has its, um, one stick like this, like a tap, and then they have the handles like that. After washing your hands, you want to dry your hands, you just leave your hand open like this, and then hot air will blow on your hands. Gotta go check this out. <laughs> yeah. Let's go into the mail washer and see if they have it. Oh, they do? <laughs> okay, so she said tap in the middle. All right, that worked. And then... Yes! <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Uh, that's pretty clever, huh? I am searching for my jacket. This is a jacket I got here at Winners five years ago. Can you try to find another one exactly like that? Not like this, but as good as this one. There are other winner's branches. We might have to go to other ones. Okay. Behind me here is more evidence of a caring community here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Not only do they provide much parking for handicapped people, but also they provide parking specifically reserved for those people who either have a family or are expecting a family. To be continued.